lodged under soft in steps in school sandals, crunching painfully towards the sea. Spread the red blanket, drop the bag in the lee of the breakwater. Green slime tells where the tide will rise, bring oily feathers, splinters, mysterious white cuttlefish bones, rocking on shallow waves. A winging, keening of gulls, wheeling in the shimmer, air aromatic with iodine, salt, jellyfish, sprawled broken above last night's tide. Quick, my brown gingham frock, the one I wear in all the faded photos my mother will hoard for 50 years, over my head, and then free in ruched cotton and old black plimsolls, scramble across the shifting mire of pebbles, down to where false promises of sand show among the pungent silt of sea rack, broken shells and scraps of, shell, of crabs. Soon, it's lovely in, and tentatively I spread my body frog-like, one hand always poised below to save me if I sink. Above me, a fat bumblebee heads out towards Calais. And the second one I've written this week is called Seeing Red. And it's about the colour red. On my scarlet sleeve, a russet leaf falls. Through the rustling drift, red plastic boots dance ahead, avoiding black cracks with a skip. She grasps the ba baby's mittened hand, his rosy cheeks like red plums. Their mother, pausing at bright windows, sail, reds, this season's hue for fashionable girls like you. Past the pillar box, the Liverpool graffiti, the traffic crossing lights have changed. Frustrated red mini driver waits, roars away from the line we've trodden. Makes believe red flame is pouring from exhaust. Exhausted woman shakes her head, swathed in red headscarf. No to the big issue, though its colours red. Turns her head away, blushing. Pulled on towards the golden M on the field of blood. Wheels the stroller through the automatic door. They're lost now in thoughts of monster meals. Red plastic seats, cardboard cup of cherry flavoured dice. Um, and uh, this one is a bit of a puzzle poem. It's actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of its, sorry, eleven of its lines are from other poets. I don't, know, I don't know if you'll spot it, but here we are. It's called Insomnia, and it was actually inspired by a short video by Andrea Robinson, whom some of you may have met. I, think I haven't only known her online. Um, but this is what I wrote actually today, so it's probably not finished. Footfalls echo in the memory, where thought, like a monstrous pendulum, swings backwards and forwards between regret and boredom in the small circle of pain within the skull. Only a look and a voice, then darkness again. I am a substance clad in shadow, a silence that rustles and hums with teeming blood, no pause. Deep in that darkness hearing, in the dream-crossed twilight between birth and dying, shall I fight my own shadow forever? But I believe I shall go gently into that dark night. That's called insomnia. Two lines from T.S. Eliot and one each from Eugene Field, Schopenhauer, Longfellow, John Sterling, who I've never heard of before, but I looked him up the internet, Edgar Allan Poe, Edward Bulwer Lytton, and W. H. Jordan, which you probably read. Jan, Janice Spindle. And Janice Wingle, two lines of mine, and about four, five words. <laughs> um, and this is another one that I've written this week. It's called Venus. Venus, many breasted, most desired, reclines at noon at ease on her soft couch of quilted squirrel skins and wings of moths. She is the mistress of the moon, and when her lover's full face calls, and lets down a gleaming pathway to her feet. She twines the flowers of the night, the pale lilies, in lazy garlands around her milky limbs, and singing, 
she ascends. But when the moon's diminished to a sink sickle, Venus wears her cap of black henbane, takes her lustful owl upon her wrist, and roams the woods, striped creatures of the night at her heels. Searching for an earthly husband, she mourns her hus lover's fickle change of face. Thank you. Janice Wendell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Poetry and plagiarism. <laughs> Abby said to Jenny that Connie said to Ed that Ed had said to Jamie that he'd often heard it said, and Jamie went and found Anne, who said she knew already that he gave her all the details that he had had from Eddie, and Annie passed it on to Peter in the street, who told the rugger team, a hooker is our Pete, and the fullback passed it on to his most discreet pal, John. And Johnny dished the dirt to Abby, who was hurt to hear that Connie said she was a gossip. <laughs> Something about dishing the dirt about a hooker, I think. <laughs>